Hello everyone and welcome to iBasiac, the channel to be for all your floor care news, views and reviews. Well, what have we got for you today? Well, today it's a review and the cleaner in question is this Hoover Telios Eco G bagged vacuum cleaner. Now, I unboxed this machine on my channel a few weeks ago and first impressions were favourable. I like the fact that it was quite quiet, which is something you don't get much nowadays in a Chinese-made vacuum cleaner. They're normally quite high-pitched screamers, but this one was, was quite pleasant sounding. Um, I, like, I just like the look of the machine. It seems quite robust. It's lightweight, has all the features you could possibly need on a machine of this price. Integrated tools, variable electronic speed control, bag check indicator washable HEPA filter and in the unboxing I switched the machine on and gave it a little go around the room and I was quite impressed but since the unboxing I've not actually used this machine so today is the day I'll be putting the Telios through its paces with my famous bag of filth. Okay without any further ado I'm in the living room the carpet in front of me looks suspicious, suspiciously clean I'm not doing that again, I've done plenty of takes, so <laughs> I'm leaving that in. It's suspiciously clean, the carpet in front of me, but uh, my bag of filth will soon sort that out. So, I'm going to spread a load of dirt in front of me and just see how the EcoG performs on carpets. I'll then take it into the kitchen, see how it picks up on hard floors. I'll also see how convenient it is to use on the stairs, using it on upholstery, curtains, all those nooks and crannies. And finally, I'll see how easy it is to replace the bag and maintain the filters. Okay then, without any further ado, let's get some muck spread. Eagle-eyed viewers among you may have noticed this Panasonic icon in the background of the last shot. Now, I do have a reason for having this machine out. One reason is I've been using it quite a lot and I've actually fallen in love again with this fantastic vacuum cleaner. So much so that I think it deserves another video. The last video I made of this machine, I don't think I had high definition then, so I'll be doing a new demonstration video of this fantastic vacuum cleaner. But the reason I've got this out, because I've been using it a lot, the bag is very, very full and it does need replacing. So I thought, why not harvest the Panasonic for my dirt that I need for the EcoG demonstration. So. Here is the bag, I suppose, I mean it is, it's two thirds full, it's up to about here which is a recommended sort of fill line, you don't really want to be filling them too much. I could, I suppose, get some more dirt in there, but, uh, but no, it could do with a nice new bag in. So I'm going to split this bag open and spread the contents all over my floor. Right then, let's have a look what's in the contents of this bag. Hopefully there'll be enough to use for my demonstration. I'm making the incision here. I've never done this on camera before, so might be of interest to some of you, I don't know. Ooh. There's a lot of dirt. As you'd expect there to be in a vacuum cleaner dust bag. These bags seem quite good, the Panasonic bags. You can see the two layers, you've got the finer filter layer here and of course the outer layer and you can see the very fine dust has passed through this layer but it's been trapped more or less by the outer layer. So that's very fine powdery dust. So we'll have all the larger dust and debris inside. Of course, this is what we never got to see in the old days, before bagless. Now we get to see all the dirt. And I'm not sure whether that's a good thing. Look at that. Now this just proves how effective this Panasonic vacuum is. It really is. It's a shame you can't buy it anymore. Actually, no, that is pretty full. As you can see... You can see the hole there where the dirt enters. It really is chock-a-block. I thought there was a bit of space left, but obviously when I've opened up, you can see it looks like a big mouth. Hello, I'm your dirt. Nah, 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 nah. 
So, ooh, yucky. This rather defeats the object of all the weeks I've been using this vacuum, only to, instead of nicely disposing of the dirt outside in the bin, I'm throwing it back out, <laughs> throwing it back on my carpets. But how else am I to demonstrate a vacuum cleaner to you without some visible dirt? And look, there you can see inside all that fine. It's an excellent cleaner, this Panasonic, because look at that. So that's the bag empty. I just need a bit of sticky tape and I can reuse that bag. What do you think? I don't think so. Okay. Oh, well, that stopped smelling long ago. A little bit of an air freshener pellet. So here, this is what I've been picking up off my carpets. And as you can see, there's a lot of hair in here, a lot of, uh, that's um, carpet fibres from a wool rug that officially shouldn't be cleaned with an upright cleaner. Oh, that isn't dog hair. That is human hair, I'm sorry to say. No, I'm not molting, it was when I have been having, you know, I have my hair cut at home and obviously it needs to be picked up. Oh, what's that? It's amazing what you find in a vacuum bag. There's some sort of a pill there. I have no idea what that's for. Oh, I hope it's not. Oh, I hope it's not the antibiotics I was on. No wonder that they didn't didn't uh, fix the problem. Now <laughs> I have no idea. I better put that to one side. I don't want the dogs finding it and eating it. Okay, <coughs> starting to to choke a bit. So what I'm going to do? I'm going to spread this out in a wide area, and I'll probably add a few bits on top of this to give you a bit more of a visual treat. And then we'll pass the EcoG Telios back and forth through the middle of this mess and see how it performs. This is the carpet and floor head you get supplied with the EcoG. Pretty standard affair with a foot operated pedal to introduce the brush at the front and a squeegee at the back for doing hard floors. But for carpets, you want the brush up it's a metal based sole plate which is good to see most cheaper cleaners have a plastic sole plate but I like to see a metal sole plate on a vacuum cleaner personally you've got your suction groove at the front side suction channels and either side of the main suction inlet you've got these red litter pickers they're designed to help cope with more difficult to pick up litter such as pet hairs and clinging threads and fibres okay so I'm going to pass the nozzle through the middle of this dirt, front and back, just two passes, one forward and one back. We'll evaluate the results after that, and I'm going to use the machine on its maximum setting. isn't too bad. Let's have a look at the underside of the head. As you can see, a few bits trapped there, but I'm sure as I go back and forth, they'll soon be released into the airstream. Apart from that, there's a large piece of paper there that got caught. For a straight suction cleaner at 1100 watts, it's not done bad. Now, it's certainly coped with the sugar it's certainly coped with the larger particles. Some bits that it hasn't quite got this time. There's a cluster here of the carpet fibres, the red carpet fibres. Obviously, they're a bit more stubborn. You often need to use a turbo nozzle. If you've got pets, I would certainly recommend a machine with a turbo nozzle, full-size turbo nozzle, or even better, a motorised power head. If you've got lots of carpets and you must have a cylinder cleaner, but, in two passes, I don't think that's bad at all. I'll just uh, clean up a bit more of the area up. I'll just clean this area here. But I'll just do it the, the way you'd normally clean, not one forward and one backward pass. I'm just going to go over this area a few times, back and forth, as you'd normally go about your daily cleaning. Obviously, this isn't the sort of dirt you'll be coping with every day, but it's an extreme example but it just gives you an idea of how well, if the machine's going to perform like this, 
with this sort of dirt then on you know regular dirt day-to-day -day dirt it should do quite well Well, as you could see, I had to go over the area a few times in order to remove all the dirt, but I'm pretty impressed with that result. It did, more or less, get everything. Obviously, it didn't get everything in one or two passes. I did have to go over some parts quite a few times to remove the more difficult litter, like the carpet fibres and the hairs. But all in all, it's more or less, the area I've actually cleaned is clean. Well, who'd have thunk it? I'm actually impressed with a Hoover vacuum cleaner. That doesn't happen very often nowadays. Uh, I, I don't know why, but... Looks a bit gross, that, but I'll do... <laughs> bit of static electricity on the head. It's managed to pick up some of the hairs, but uh, that's not where they want to be. They want to be inside the nozzle, not on top. As I said earlier, it's extreme, this example. You're not going to get this sort of muck in your home unless you're a filthy beggar. If you're a regular person who doesn't like to let their dirt build up to this extent, then so far this machine's performing pretty well. And it's down to this particular nozzle. If I was to attach one of the new nozzles Hoover now supply with their Eco vacuum cleaners, I doubt I would get a similar result. Anyway, while I've got some dirt left, I might as well demonstrate the turbo nozzle as I, as I look around for it. It's behind me. This nozzle actually comes as standard with this particular vacuum. It's a pet hair remover. It's a pretty standard air-powered turbo nozzle with a rotating brush that's powered by the suction of the vacuum cleaner. There's a little switch, a catch on there, if I just undo that. It opens up partly, so you can see inside, see how it works. So the suction powers the turbine, which in turn drives the brushes at the front via a little toothed belt. So they have advantages and disadvantages, air-powered nozzles. The disadvantages, they do increase the noise level of the vacuum. They tend to be quite noisy. Also, if the vacuum cleaner's suction reduces, so does the efficiency of the nozzle. The less the suction, obviously, the slower the brushes rotate. But in their favour, they're quite lightweight. They don't require you to have electrical connectors through the hose, so it makes the hose lighter. But for me personally, I do like an electric powered head on a cylinder vacuum cleaner because they do perform very well. They don't slow down even if the suction drops because obviously they have a separate electric motor. Anyway, I'm just going to pass, just reposition the camera, connect this nozzle directly to the handle of the hose and pass it front and back through the middle of this and we'll see how the pet hair remover performs. Okay, so I'm positioned on the floor behind the dirt, ready to pass the pet hair remover forward and back through this mess. I'm gonna use the machine on full power. Bear in mind that this is one pretty noisy nozzle, so I do apologize if you have to cover your ears for this part of the demonstration. So, like with the main nozzle, I'm going to pass it backwards and forwards through the middle of this mess. Oof. Now that, apart from obviously here, the line of shame. We've not seen the line of shame for a bit. This is what I call the line of shame. 
the treasure trail, the dust trail, whatever you like to call it, it's unavoidable with many turbo nozzles, many upright vacuum cleaners have this effect. And the reason, of course, is we do have parts underneath the nozzle. There's no brush because that's where the belt is. So, as you can see, there's no brushing action there. There'd still be suction across the full width of the nozzle, but no brushing action, which is why the more difficult to remove dirt has been left. This, this is the hairs and the rug fibres from the wool rug. But obviously, as you're normally cleaning, you wouldn't be going like that, back and forward in a straight line. You'd be doing this sort of thing, which is what I'm going to do now to clean up the rest of this mess. Yes, it's a noisy head, but it's a good head, isn't it? It's picked all that up. It's done it, as I said, it's done it noisily. And if we look underneath, well, the brushes aren't too bad. I see a little bit of debris caught, but of course, because we can take the nozzle apart, oh, oh, not quite so good. You can see in there that there is quite a bit of dirt trapped. We can shake that out, or of course we can just use the nozzle of the vacuum, possibly with a crevice tool attached to it, just to clean out that debris. But as I said, this shouldn't happen in regular use. If you're just using this nozzle to clean your upholstery, to clean your pet bedding, to clean your stairs, you're not going to get this volume of, of debris in one go. This is an extreme example. But anyway, wow! That performed pretty well. It's not often I say wow to a Hoover cleaner. Not a modern Hoover cleaner anyway, not a, not a Hoover candy Hoover. Hoover candy are they called now? Since candy took Hoover over unfortunately it has been a downward spiral but um, this is a pretty good vacuum. It's discontinued! <laughs> what a shame! But so far I'm pretty impressed. Okay, I've cleaned the carpet. Apart from that bit which I've just put back on but I'll I'll see to that later. It's off into the kitchen now and I'm going to see how the hard floor nozzle performs, well the carpet slash hard floor nozzle performs on my kitchen floor. Well you find me in my kitchen and in front of me I've put down some debris but there is some organic dirt actually. Is that the correct word? Anyway, there's dirt here that was here before. I've had some problems with my washing machine today and I've had to have the washing machine out. And when I pulled the washing machine out, I had to sweep out quite a lot of muck, mainly dog hairs and other bits and pieces that were under my washing machine. So that is some of the dirt that's here, but most of the dirt I've put down myself. So we've got again a mixture of different sized particles. We've got some sugar, rice, rolled oats, and coffee. So all the sort of all sort of debris that you might spill on the average kitchen floor or possibly the not quite so average floor. My floor isn't average because it does see its fair share of dirt but then again not many people deliberately mess up their floors do they? Okay so I've reattached the carpet and floor nozzle but for this demonstration with the pedal pressed down towards the back. I've now got it in hard floor mode. So, try and show you. Oop, there we go. <laughs> it's very hard to see. I'm, I'm looking at this upside down. So now I've got the nozzle in hard floor mode. So we've got a brush at the front and quite a nice long flexible squeegee at the back. So that, that should prevent the dirt from being sort of missed. It won't get flicked because it's not like an upright with a rotating brush. Uh, there's also grooves in the front brush which hopefully will be able to deal with larger particles. And obviously the fibre pickup, red fibre pickup pads here, they don't come into effect, but you don't need those 
on a hard surface. Okay, it's still in maximum suction. Again, as with the carpet, I'm going to pass the nozzle back and forward through the mess. Here we have a very familiar sight to my regular viewers. This nozzle, I'm afraid, suffers from the snow plough effect. Now, not only has it snow ploughed frontwards, and I'll show you that in a minute, I'll reposition the camera and show you just how much it has snow ploughed, but also the squeegee at the back has managed to snow plough the dirt behind it as well. So, mm, not very good. It's dealt with the majority of the smaller particles, most of the sugar, I can just see some. Um, but really, unfortunately, with the brush here at the front, it's managed to push a lot of the dirt in front of the nozzle and not picked it up. Obviously, I will pick it up. It just means having to angle the nozzle slightly. I'll just reposition the camera and show you how much dirt is actually snow ploughed. So as you can see here, it's pushed mostly all the large particles, including actually the coffee. It's pushed that to the front of the nozzle and not picked it up. I will, as I said, it, this will pick it up, but it just means angling the nozzle. There's not many vacuums I've come across so far that can deal with larger particles on a hard floor without you having to tilt the nozzle backwards. Again, it's an extreme example. You shouldn't get this sort of mess on your floors. It's easy enough to pick up. I'm pretty sure that the machine will pick all this up and I will demonstrate that for you. But, you know, it's let me down a bit. It has done pretty poorly on the large particles. Well, you know me, I don't like to leave a mess, especially a mess that contains food particles. Because if I was to leave this on the floor, no doubt, I have three at the moment, three little dogs will possibly trot into the kitchen and think, ah, some extra food for us to tuck into. But I don't really want them eating raw rice, oats and coffee. So I hopefully will be able to clean every last speck of this dirt up using the Eco G. But like I said, I will need to do a little bit of angling the nozzle to get the larger particles. foot of our stairs is a expression that's sometimes used, used to be used, I think it's probably from Lancashire, any of my um, American, Canadian, Australian, New Zealand viewers, Finnish viewers, wherever you're viewing from, it's a local expression, I'll go to the foot of our, our stairs, I'll go to the foot of our stairs, something like that. Um, anyway, I think it basically means, well I am at the foot of my stairs, well not quite, I'm a couple of steps up but I think it means more or less, when you say, oh, well, go to the foot of our stairs, it's some sort of expression meaning, I'm flabbergasted. Oh, I never believed that in a million years. You know, I can't think of something to say, but anyway, enough of that. We're digressing from the vacuum cleaner. So as you can see, the Hoover Eco G does sit quite comfortably on a standard stair with a little bit of room to spare. It's not teetering on the edge. It's not about to toss, it, I was gonna say toss itself off. It's not about to fall. <laughs> Should I? No, I'll leave that in. Leave that in. Bit of 
Bit of a blooper there. I don't mean, well, you know what I mean. I'm not trying to be, honestly, this time I wasn't trying to be rude on purpose. It just came out. Ooh, uh, now, it's, um, it's on the stairs. I'm having fun today, I don't know why. The, the drugs are finally kicking in. Now, it sits very comfortably on a stair, so it doesn't matter that the hose is only 1.5 metres long. I'd like to see a longer one. Ooh, uh, no, st stop it. Uh, I'd like to see 1.8 metres minimum. Um, or slightly longer than that, I believe Henry's uh, something like 2.5, which is a nice length, but still not long enough to get up the stairs. But unlike the big fat Henry, you can actually sit this cleaner on a stair, so stair cleaning is no problem. And for cleaning stairs, you can either use the PET turbo nozzle, or if you delve inside, you can retrieve this little nozzle, which is it's basically a multi-purpose nozzle. You could use that for your upholstery, use that for your stairs, your curtains, your car seats, in areas where you can't actually reach with the big nozzle in your home. You know, if you've got a big piece of furniture next to a wall and there's a little gap that obviously gathers dust, you can use that nozzle. It's got, well, it's got a bit of muck on it, but it's got the litter pickers, the red litter pickers to help deal with more clinging litter. So unless your hairs, uh, unless your hairs, unless your stairs are very hairy, you may not need to use the turbo brush. If you let your dogs go up and down the stairs, you might have a trail of hair. If you've got a particularly hairy husband who molts, you might need to use that. But I tend to like to use the standard straight suction. It's a bit easier to handle and it gets closer to the edge than the turbo nozzle. So there's no need to demonstrate, really. You can see that it sits quite comfortably and I can go up the stairs Obviously, don't be too vigorous with it because it will fall down. Just be careful and you can move the machine up each step as you go up the staircase. But it is light. It's very, very light. So, being the strapping, muscular chap that I am, I can actually carry this very easily all the way up, right to the top and all the way down again. So, for stair cleaning, it's pretty convenient and pretty easy to use. I suppose that's another way of saying it's convenient. But anyway, yes, it does well, does well on the stairs, so it's a thumbs up for stair cleaning. Before I do my summing up, I thought I'd just show you the various features of the Hoover Eco G. Now, at the moment, it's in the parked position, so we have a parking bracket on the machine, a slot on the machine, and a bracket on the main carpet and floor nozzle. So if you need to pause your cleaning, you can just pop the nozzle into there instead of having to throw your handle down on the floor and pick it up. It just means it's upright and it's easier just to grab. I would be wary, this hasn't broken, but then again, I'm not very rough with my things. It does feel quite, quite strong, but this can be a weak point in some vacuum cleaners. And if that breaks off, then this particular feature is rendered null and void and useless. So just take care of things and they should last. So that's the first thing to show you, the parking bracket. While I've got the tube, I'll just point out that it is metal, quite lightweight, and it is telescopic as well. So you've got a thumb switch here, so you can adjust. That's good for storage, it makes the machine more compact in storage but you can adjust it to various positions according to your height and according to the height of the item you want to clean. So if you want to clean up high with a dusting brush, say, on the top of your curtains or your pelmets, you obviously want to extend it to its full reach. But if you're cleaning in a more confined space, you want to compact it down. So, as I said earlier, it's a 1.5 meter crush-proof hose. It shouldn't distort it should bounce back if you step on it. You've got a suction relief valve here in addition to the electronic speed control on the body of the machine. And the hose swivels all the way around on either side, on the handle side and on the cleaner side, so it shouldn't get tangled up. I'll just remove the hose so I can show you the rest of the cleaner. So we've got the integrated cleaning tools. Nice little feature. I do like having the tools inside 
the machine rather than actually clipped onto the handle or hose like you get with some machines. Pretty standard set of cleaning tools. Short crevice tool, very very short actually, but it's okay for doing your nooks and crannies. Not all nooks and crannies, you might not get the crannies, but you should get the nooks. This dusting brush, I quite like it. It's not a bad design. The brushes are a little bit stiff. I wouldn't recommend that on very delicate surfaces, but it's okay for your general dusting, your, you know, your bookshelves, tops of cupboards, that sort of thing. It should be fine for. And the nozzle you've seen earlier, your regular all-purpose nozzle. You've also got under the tool flap. There's a bag full indicator. I would take bag full indicators with a pinch of salt especially this type, this just works on a spring and piston affair. When it shows red, it means either you've got a blockage or you need to check the bag. But I personally would check the bag yourself periodically. Don't rely on the bag check indicators. Here's the maximum minimum control. So you can lower the speed if you want to do delicate items like your curtains. Obviously when you're cleaning hard floors and carpets, keep it on max. Behind this panel here is the washable HEPA filter. Just take that off. Let's have a look at it actually. Well, that's still pretty clean, I must say. Obviously I've not used it much, but I have used it for quite a lot of dirt. That is still clean. You can actually rinse that, leave it to dry for 24 hours and put it back in the machine. Underneath, which is probably why the HEPA filter has stayed so clean, underneath we've got another washable foam filter Again, rinse it, squeeze it out, leave it to dry. Not over a direct heat source though. You can see, I think there's a bit, I don't know if that is dust or what. It's a funny, it's not all over the whole area. Seems to be some dust gathered there. The motor is all protected inside it. It's probably why it's fairly quiet because the motor is double insulated all around. So, they're the two filters you need to wash, exhaust filters. There is another filter which I'll show you in a moment. Foot operated on off switch, foot operated automatic cord rewind. Pull the cord out fully before you use the machine until you see a red sticker. There we go. So first of all you'll see a yellow sticker so you really shouldn't pull the cord out much beyond that. But if you see the red, certainly don't pull it out. I like to hide the red there. It's okay to have the yellow showing, but don't pull it out much beyond the red setting. What have I forgotten? You've, you know, are you shouting? You haven't put the filter back in? Well, I have, I have now. There we go. Easy mistake to make. So, foot operated, automatic cord rewind. Wow, that's pretty effective. Nice big wheels and they do have a, a covering like a, a rubber tyre surface so it will protect your hard floors and you've got of course your 360 degree swivel caster. There's another bracket on the back here too, that's a storage bracket so you can actually, or for when you're carrying the machine, you can actually attach the tube and nozzle to that. What else have I got to show you? I think the only other thing to show you is the bag. So the bag is inside here, open, pretty easy. Push it and then push it again, and then it'll stay in the open position. So despite the fact this bag's fairly full, I haven't noticed a dramatic drop in the suction. Now, there's still plenty of life in this bag, but when you do normally remove the bag, it will seal. But it's not <laughs> because that's broken. Anyway, it's not on properly, but that is supposed to. If that was to stop there, as we remove the bag, it is supposed to seal. So as you take the bag completely out, it would normally be completely closed. I'm trying not to do that because I still want to use the bag. I can actually open it. So the bag has a bit of a silicon rubber seal to help keep the dust in. The bags are fairly easy to get if you're in the UK. You can get them direct from Hoover, many online stores. I would always get the genuine bags. It's not worth, you know, scrimping. Personally, the genuine bags, for the sake of a few pounds, buy the genuine bags. It's still, it's fairly full, but there's still life in there. 
um, I can still use the machine. But now I've seen the inside of the machine and something you don't get with Miele cleaners because their bags are very effective. You can see there there is some dust in the dust compartment. A little bit disappointing there but it has gone through quite a lot of dirt today. And behind the bag in the compartment here it's another filter, the motor protection filter. That also is washable. Slide that out, give it a rinse, dry it. A couple of stray hairs and a little bit Oop, there we go, a little bit of dirt. Hang on, there we go. There, up, down, which way? <laughs> a little bit of dirt is on there, but it's not too bad. The bag has trapped most of the dust, but not all. So it's still cleaner in here than it would have been. If it was a bagless vacuum, I would be coughing and sneezing and uh, I'd be knee deep in mess, as you saw if you watch the Hoover Idol demonstration this machine has outperformed that definitely so in the case of idle versus eco g case of bagged versus bagless well bagged in this instance has won this time has won this round but has it won the war it's a little sticker in there a little red and black sticker giving you a phone number and a website where you can obtain spares I'll just pop that back in i will I'll be able to use this machine a bit more before having to put a new bag in. The bags are quite small, but it has, as I said, picked up a lot of dirt in this demonstration. The bag was empty when I started. If you don't fit the bag properly, it won't allow you to close the bag door, so make sure it is properly located in the holder before you close the door. Well, that is about it. Let's pop the hose back on. So oh, there we go, that concludes my review and demonstration of the Hoover Eco G bagged cylinder vacuum cleaner. I like this vacuum cleaner. Yes, Hoover, you heard me. Is that in? No. Yeah. I actually like this little vacuum. It's it's robust. I can't you know tell you anything about the long-term reliability. They only have a one-year guarantee. But I like it. I like it's very easy to move. It pulls, it follows you easily. Something I haven't shown you in the video, but it really does move easily behind you. It's light, it's fairly quiet. And from the demonstrations, it's performed pretty well. So if you can still find one of these, I would recommend it. It's certainly a thumbs up from me. I s doubt I would recommend any of the new models. This model is available under several different names. It's available under Telios. I believe it's available under the Enigma name as well. They do a black and silver one, but the Enigma, the new Enigmas, are the lower wattage motor, and they do come with some pretty appalling main floor heads, which I've tested in other machines, the Hoover Spritz and the Hoover Idol. I didn't like those cleaning heads. They performed very poorly, in my opinion. Well, not just my opinion. If you've seen the videos, you'll know. This is a regular standard head. It performed very well with this 1100 watt vacuum. With a, with a 7 or 800 watt vacuum, I don't know if it performed as well, but I'm pretty impressed with the results I got from that nozzle using this cleaner. So that's the end of my demo. Please subscribe and you'll be updated every time I upload a new floor care video. So until then, thanks for watching and I'll see you soon.